Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the internet, thanks to the marvel of technology, I'm coming at you live from a little guest house in Memphis, Tennessee. This is Keith Anthony Blanchard, you listen to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Enfoldment and Reinforcement, that's Radio for the Soul and the Transformation Station, my RPM program, my lifelong work. Are you a spiritual seeker who's ready to move forward in your life? If you're wanting to shift from struggling to feeling that life is effortless, send me an email saying, Keith, I want my free 30-minute session. It's free. What do you have to lose? Uh, Title that email, Keith, I want my free 30-minute session, and we'll get you on your way to explosive clarity, feeling connected in a form of intuition. Oh, my gosh. All these things. This Again, this is my lifelong work. This is how I am able to live the, my life with effortless ease. And I'm now bringing that to the public so I can offer that to you. Again, Keith Anthony Blanchard at Gmail. Title that email. I want my free 30-minute session, and we'll get you going. Also, while you're at Center of Light Radio, once you see, you see the opening page, and you'll see a little red Ferrari zoom across the page. Once that car settles down, Click on it, and that will also take you to all the information that the RPM program has to offer and what you will get and also what it will do for you. While you're at Center of Light on the opening page, you will also see a sign-up form. Fill it out. It will start a chain of events that will begin to send you in bundles. Now, all the things I've ever created to this point, free. Dig that. So over a period of time, you're going to receive all of my creations, all of my work at no cost to you. Check it out. And also you will also you will also have access to my newsletter program when you fill up that sign up form and do that. It, it, just stuff is going to keep coming to you. I want to send a shout out to one of my friends, Mr. Justin Jordan. He sent me a turtle rattle, a Native American rattle that he created. And he creates all this phenomenal Native American jewelry and art and all these really, really cool things. He asked me if I'd send him a shout out. I said, absolutely. Go to facebook.com slash sits in middle of land. Sits in middle of land. Facebook.com slash sits in middle of land. If you want to check out his work, you can tell him I sent you. And I'm sure he'll sl- send you a slew of pictures of everything he's created and probably can um, create things just by, you know, what it is you're wanting specifically. Let's see. Um, yes, sir. And if you if you would uh, go to YouTube and look up Center of Light Radio, subscribe to my page, like like the videos that you check out, leave a comment. Uh, this thing is starting to grow. I think uh, Joe and I are going to have a conversation after the show. And I think I think this is my third and a half year, which means I'm going to check my stats really soon and give you a report on those, how Center of Light Radio is forever. Take this, expanding, which I'm loving. 888-919-2355. 888-919-2355 is the number you dial to get on Center of Light Radio to speak to myself. Or my guest tonight, Mr. David Hamilton Nichols. And we're going to be talking about personal and global transformation in times of chaos. It's funny, the last two two or three guests I had in the recent past, we talked about transformation in troubled times, times of chaos. Uh, It must be pertinent. Let me give you a little information about my guest today. David Hamilton Nichols is a transformational speaker, author, empowering, intuitive, and master healer. He transmits the universe's most powerful information and energy to widespread events, media, and individuals. And individuals. He presents life-changing workshops, empowering its clients and audiences. He facilitates personal and world transformation and healing. David has spoken at the Conscious Life Expo and the New Living Expo, the two biggest expos on the West Coast. David also offers hospital energy workshops and has presented at the Death and Dying Symposium, All Day Immersion into Death. David is a popular media guest in addition to his many regular media appearances. He has been featured a featured guest on Transformations with Tara Sutphin. Welcome to Center of Light Radio, Mr. David Hamilton Nichols. It's a pleasure. Thank you uh, for having me, Keith. Anthony Blanchard. Absolutely. And also listening audience, you can find more about my guests at www.divineblaze.com. That's divineblaze.com. 
Again, David, welcome to the show. Tell me, if you would, sir, how did you get into this movement? Was this something that you were, quote, born with and at an early age you started to seep into your consciousness? Or did bad choices paint you in the corner and you had nowhere else to go but up? Well, I wouldn't say I made too many bad choices, uh, so I guess I'm fortunate there. Of course, we all make uh, those so-called bad choices now and then. But uh, I was when I was young, I was somewhat prescient. Uh, my mom was okay with it, although I know things about people I didn't have a reason to know. Uh, she was fine, said, just be careful what you say and where. So that was that. And as I uh, grew up, I had to, I'd have an intuitive gut sense about people. Then in my teens, I had some precognitive dreams. And fast forward a while, I got off that uh, path, as a lot of us do as we get older. And then in 2000, uh, let's see, 2005, I believe, uh, my mom for Mother's Day dragged my dad and me to a spiritual organization. And she said, uh, well, it's Mother's Day. You don't have to buy me anything. Uh, just come uh, with me. And well, my family's been in business for a lot of generations. So we're thinking, okay, we know a deal when we see it. We're spending the day with her anyway. She doesn't want flowers or gifts. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> I know, I know, but that's what we were thinking. So to condense this quite a bit, uh, I did end up getting a reading from the leader of that organization, and I was told I would be a channel. Now, at the time, I didn't know the difference between a channel as a TV station or ditch in the ground and a spiritual conduit. Um, it was said that it would begin. <laughs> yeah. Right. It was said that it would begin in writing, and I had had a very little bit of a meditation experience uh, back probably quite a few years prior when I took a very brief Kabbalah course, the only real spiritual course I'd had in quite a while. And I thought, okay, I'm going to start meditating again. And I meditated a while, and I decided, well, if it's going to start with writing, in case it does work, I'll do it at the computer. Uh, my handwriting is terrible, and I don't like uh, wasting time transcribing. So just in case it did, I sat down at the computer, I meditated, and I was able to go into an altered state. And I kept practicing this in writing, and the states got clearer and clearer and easier and easier to attain. And one day, uh, my mom, I don't know where my dad was that day, but my mom and I were at the kitchen table and we were talking about something that had been written. We weren't quite understanding something. And I was standing there, she was sitting and I said something and she thought, that's good. I'd better write that down so I don't forget it. And so she did. And I keep talking and she realizes that's not David anymore. Now, uh, I, by that point, I was half in, half out and grabbed onto the chair just to make sure I kept my balance because I didn't usually do anything like that standing up. <laughs> so I, uh, that said, uh, I don't uh, usually let anybody into my space, physical or non-physical, <laughs> without uh, asking uh, permission. But I'd had a working relationship there, so I knew there was kind of an energetic tap on the shoulder, and I thought, you know, I'm going to go with this. So I did get an apology later saying, you know, otherwise you wouldn't have known you could do it uh, this way, or you'd just still be typing. Anyway, fast forward from there, and I um, did events uh, publicly starting in April of 2010. So I've been doing a lot of public events since then. And I guess that uh, covers all of it, or is there something else you wanted to know about that story? So basically what you're saying that early in your life, you became a conduit, like you were saying, a channel. Is it that you would actually channel one particular energy slash entity, or did you find yourself as a payphone with people waiting in line to contact and speak through you? I uh, generally, I hear those cases of people, I guess the Long Island medium would be one. I've never seen the show, but I've heard people talk about it where everybody's knocking on that door and won't leave you alone. Fortunately, I have not dealt with that. Generally, I can 
sometimes I'll deal with people's relatives, not in that way, but I can sometimes say, hey, you got a relative around you. But generally, I only work in the capacity that I work as a channel. I only work with specific uh, things that I'm familiar with. Uh, back then, I was dealing with some guides who opened, helped me open that up. And I deal uh, a lot with the archangelic frequencies and uh, Mary, a face of the divine feminine, the Christ consciousness. Those are often what I work with. However, more and more, it's just becoming more almost a generic connection with energy, if you want to call it that. So let's speak, if you would, about personal and global transformation in times of chaos. You know, David, as well as you, and I'm sure as many others, we can we can cliche quote this thing how we want as we look out and about in the world and say you know i'm a spiritualist i'm not judgmental because i'm cool i got my stuff together yeah there's some things happening but in, is what i'm really seeing um you know moving through my perception and if i label it this and it's judgmental so everything's perfect and peachy in the spiritual plateau i think that's that's denial uh, things yes. are not well in the world i would in one way, I tend to agree with you, and I also tend to agree with the former statement you said. Right. At one level, <laughs> at the spiritual level, yeah, it's all peachy keen. Uh, however, we're also in a physical reality here, too. Uh, we're called to bridge that heaven and that earth, uh, to create a new heaven and a new earth. So if we are denying the reality on this physical uh, plane, we are... Uh, we're creating a spiritual bypass there. And we're taking an escape from uh, what is our duty here as spiritual beings. So yes, it is all perfect, all good and all unfolding, but. So how do we move into the arena of personal and global transformation? So let's start off on the personal. How can everyone begin to do whatever it is you're going to offer here through this platform, Center of Light Radio? You can dial 888-919-2355 if you want to get on the air to speak to myself or my guest, David uh, Hamilton uh, Nichols. Um, how does one go about beginning the transformation process in these times of chaos? Well, it's right in front of us. Anything that tends to, uh, well, I won't say it because I'm on the air. I'll say it politely. Anything that tends to uh, trigger us is inclined to point out some places where we might be able to transform. So if we pay attention to that, that's uh, one marker that will uh, lead us along the right path. Now, apart from that, uh, it's important to, uh, to meditate. Uh, that's, of course, the advice everybody gives, but uh, maybe there's a reason everybody gives it, because it's true. So that is helpful, as well as I would find energy. I would say energy is as important to our transformation as the information we get. Yeah, information is great. On a head level, it pays to understand concepts, and yet in order to integrate those, we need that energy that uh, helps facilitate that transformation. So uh, for those of uh, the listeners who may do forms of energy work, uh, start doing energy for yourself. Start doing tapping into energy yourself, uh, not just being one of those healers who is wounded and bypasses one's own growth. Uh, blessings, that uh, we have those wounds, but those wounds that draw some of us into healing, those wounds are also for us to heal so that we can be clearer healers, if you will, and we can also uh, help change ourselves and the world because that world transformation does begin with ours. I like what you said, David, and I'm not, I'm not going to put words into your mouth, but I think you were basically saying that Information is awesome, it's cool, and it's groovy, but it's not enough. Correct. And you so need we need to take that information and turn it inward and only use it in the way that's applicable for yourself because one person's um, mojo is not another person's mojo. But what, what happens is, I find, Dave, is when we turn inward with said information, ah, someone gave me a spiritual nugget, right? And it has purpose and it has power, but when we turn inward with that nugget and begin to 
implement it in our lives, it turns into something far beyond information. In fact, the information becomes a superficial level of what the information would do when we take it into the rabbit hole. Would you agree with that, sir? Uh, yes, I would. In fact, that brings me to something I meant to say earlier, but did not uh, get a chance to get in before we dove into the actual topic. And that is, we're here to embody that. If someone were to say to me, like, oh, you're a channel. Yeah, we all receive information. We all can do that. However, also the goal is to embody anything that we reach out to in this universe of ours we could not reach out to it if it is not already in us, if we are not called to tap into that and bring that forth, which is why, as you said, the information is cool. However, it needs to be embodied. Uh, we're here to embody these things and integrate them at all of our levels. So what would be some ways that our listening and audience, for those who are new to this path, who may come across this show, uh, or even for some who uh, just might find themselves, quote, stuck in a place where they just want a little more movement or begin to move forward. What would be some ways that they can concretely uh, begin to put into practice their spiritual development in these personal, for the personal chaos that may be happening in one's life? Would meditation be one, obviously? Are there anything else, any other models you would offer up, sir? I would say tap into that energy again, even... Though I hear people a lot say, oh, one needs to have taken Reiki or anything else, which those are cool. Those are all good. But if one thinks one has to have those in order to tap into the universal energy, that uh, that's a hindrance because one can always do that. Sit quietly and not only meditate, but open to that energy that's there. You might, whatever you pray to, pray to that. Whatever you believe in, deal with that. But whatever it is, know there is a universal light. Uh, I would call it the infinite light, or I also would might call it a religious name if I were to go to my past, but I'm not going there for this show. So I would say tap into that and let it do its work. Uh, the light will have its way with you. I like that, bro. I like what you said. Whatever you pray to, pray to that. Whatever. I, that's really, really cool. And so when we turn inward, um, I guess that we talked about the personal transformation. So would you say that the global transformation is the same as the personal transformation once everybody engages into the program? Well, I say good luck getting everybody engaging into that program at the moment. <laughs> but I mean, is that how it would work that if everybody participates in the program on a global level, then it becomes global transformation? Cause that would uh, that would certainly help. I would say the more of us that are doing it, the greater the transformation anyway. Uh, it's like a, a field of coherence, if you want to phrase it that way. Uh, you get enough, uh, enough of uh, one... Uh, resonance together, uh, it tends to amplify. So, uh, yeah, I would say you, you turn on a candle, you light another candle, and you light another, and the, the room ends up pretty bright, even if all the candles aren't lit. Dig that. So, David, let me ask you this, sir. Wow, it's so multifaceted. We can see it from so many perspectives, and that's a very, very powerful word, perspective, because are we look whatever it is we're looking at, are we seeing six? Or are we seeing nine? <laughs> so how would you describe in a way our audience can understand and use powerfully in a way that truly serves them and the goal, to use the word, or rather on their journey of becoming a spiritually expanded, illumined individual? How, what would be correct perception as we look out and about in the world in this time of chaos? How could we begin to see correctly what kind of filter or lack of should we be looking through so we can best be effective not only in our own lives but to help contribute to the change to the transformation of the world of humanity well good luck necessarily immediately getting rid of filters the first goal in my mind would be to pull back yes i know we're supposed to make a uh, world change, which is, of course, part of my topic. But here's the irony. Pull back. Don't be involved in it and know what's yours and what's theirs. Because if you're 
not knowing what's yours versus what's theirs, you're pretty much entangled and you're reacting. Come back to center. Because if you're knocked off that pedestal of stillness, you're already into the fray. And if you're in the mix of it, uh, totally chaotic inside, you're not helping. You're actually going to harm that. And yes, we all see, generally we'll see through some of our filters of what we've learned and experienced over the course of a lifetime. However, when we are in that central place of stillness, the whirlwind, uh, you, you look at a tornado, it's still in the center. A, a storm is still in the center. So if you want to be in the center of that storm, it, it will be uh, quiet and you will be at peace. But the second you lose that center, you're uh, as mad as everybody else. So. Joe, just Joe, just a heads up. I had someone from the chat room try to call in. Striker, uh, give it a thirty seconds. Now that I got, I think I have Mr. Joe, my producer's attention. Uh, he tried to call, and for some reason, it didn't work. Um, so give it another shot, Striker. I love David that you m said that it, we have to step back. We have to rem quote remove ourselves from the situation, or I often say, become a ghost. You know, you can't really interact the world. Just take your hands off of what you think is happening. Then suddenly a clearer picture uh, becomes visible, yeah? Yes, we are called to act. But if we are not doing that from that centered place, we're reacting. We're not responding. We're actually reacting. And if we are reacting, we are not an actor <laughs> in our lives. And that's why it's important to know what's ours and what's theirs, because when we're not in chaos, then we can help the world stay out of that chaos. It's like physician heal thyself, or if you're on, on an airplane, if you the masks come down, the adult puts them on before the child, otherwise they can't help the child. So if we have not got our own stuff together, we're just trying to fix things rather than fix ourselves. We're saying, oh, I wanna fix this rather than working on ourselves. Love it. Uh, from the chat room, Graham says, so these transformations make no difference about how you feel spiritually or practice religiously? Well, the uh, question would be is you don't have to necessarily believe in a specific religion. If that's your religion, go right ahead. At least that's my uh, view on it. It can be helpful so long as one doesn't become so caught up in the dogma, one loses one's connection to spirit by becoming caught up in actions. If that, uh, if I explained that clearly enough. Yes, absolutely. So David, would you say that very key components to spiritual transformation, personal transformation, global transformation is when one slash everyone or as many people who choose to get on board with becoming illumined, one of those factors would be awareness. Oh, yes. It's the the light is not necessarily the light that we see. Sometimes it's actually the light by which we see. And that would be more awareness itself. And if you see the light, uh, you may be blinded to some uh, blind spots. Let's put it that way. Yeah, awareness is my thing. I'm very, very big on awareness because just the fact that something may be dark in your life becoming aware of it starts the process. In fact, that's all that needs to be done. There really is no other work. Now, you could speed up the process, but if you can liken, we've all heard the term, in the light of awareness. And if something is dark in one's life, when you become aware of it, it becomes illuminated. And so do you, do you, would you agree that the, the, the dark begins to dissipate by one's awareness of a situation because one once once one becomes aware of a situation, the next time it crops up, they become a little more aware of it and a little more aware of it. And eventually over time, said darkness completely dissipates. I would uh, I would elaborate on that, actually. Please. If you turn a light on in a room, obviously it gets light and you're aware of what's in that room. So the light of awareness does let us know what's there. And once we know what's there, we can act rather than just grope in the dark. So once we have that light of awareness, we bring the light to the darkness in order to bring the darkness to the light. And uh, it might be, uh, you might also say uh, 
the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. Well, in that regard, uh, that is awareness. As soon as the darkness starts becoming aware by that light, it becomes that light. So the darkness would be that unconscious uh, aspect. And as it becomes self-aware, uh, then it becomes the light. I had a friend of mine some time back, a couple of years ago, was on Center of Light Radio. And she offered up a new model. We were somehow discussing the idea of, you know, go to God by turning in and going to the light. She says, well, if it's already lit, there's no more <laughs> work to do. She says, if you want to go to God, you have to go through the dark. And I, it totally, I totally grasp yes. the meaning. If you want to find light, you have to go to the dark. In fact, go through it. Yes. You might say that the... Uh... Sometimes the quickest route to heaven passes through hell. Jesus was supposedly there for three days. <laughs> yeah, if uh, right. you want to go, what was the, uh, there's a theological term for that. Uh, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but uh, in the Middle Ages, I think they called it the heroine of hell or something like that. I've uh, Don't quote me on that one, please. Absolutely. David, we're at the bottom of the hour. What time sure does fly. <laughs> Blast. Would you give out your contact information? Anything you want to offer to the listening audience about you, your work, and what may be going on with you, sir, please? Well, uh, my uh, website, as you mentioned earlier, is divineblaze.com. That's D-I-V-I-N-E-B-L-A-Z-E.com. Uh, make sure you spell divine right, because I have found uh, sometimes people misspell that, uh, believe it or not. And maybe that's because we have often forgotten that the divine is in us, so we can't remember how to spell it. <laughs> Even my I see people has done often. That. I see people often use uh, spell it D E V I N E divine. <laughs> that's what I was trying to avoid saying. All right. But yes, uh, that's my website. There is a contact form on there. Uh, also, my phone number is eight zero five seven zero one four seven four four, and uh, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash david.h.nichols that's n-i-c-h-o-l-s so you can find uh, me there as well and since you ask i just uh, happened to finish a free e-course that's on now on my website if you care to sign up to my list actually the web designer just happened to be fiddling around with the, the thing uh, today and we'll see actually if uh, that totally works because they're still updating some things on the form but feel free to go right ahead and uh, sign on to my list and you will get a uh, free course uh, right on there it's tapping into yourself uh, mini course so sure, that, like, that's ahead, just, ahead, sir, just a fun it's just a fun little thing really but uh I also am working on a book uh, that is not out yet, uh, but it will be. So uh, feel free to keep on track and uh, see my emails and it will be announced in there. I will be speaking at the Conscious Life Expo again uh, this February. Actually, I will be giving a, a workshop, a lecture, and I will be on a panel. So uh, if you're in L.A. and at the uh, expo, uh, feel free to say hello. I'll actually be at booth 200. And uh, off the top of my head, uh, that's about all that's uh, going this moment. And I will add one thing, though, which just slipped my mind, interestingly. Uh, it's not meant to come out uh, just this moment yet, then. Today, I'm coming forth to tell you about my lifelong work, this brand new program. Wow, people are telling me all about what these teachings are doing for them. And I decided to sit down and put this all together in a package and offer to the public. RPM Recognize Plugin and Manifest. Recognize the dynamic that's happening in the world. Plug into the dynamic that's happening within you. And when we bring these two together, the outer and the inner world, a third component begins to happen. And that's the phoenix within you that rises up through the murk, through the ashes of our own life and we begin to expand. Explosive clarity is a powerful thing. Expanded awareness is a powerful thing. Giving you tools, giving you secrets, giving you some amazing wisdom and insights that I will be bringing to you through this RPM program that will help you manifest your life in a holy instant. I've been using these techniques all of my life 
And dear Lord, let me tell you, they are powerful. And when you implement this in your life, not only will you be helping yourself to expand and have those things that you desire deserve, everyone around you will say, what is it you're doing? Can you please share with me some of that? <laughs> RPM, recognize and plug in and manifest your life. Go to KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com. Send me that email and title it, Keith, I want my free 30-minute session. And we'll get you on your way to an expanded, blissful, explosive, clarity, lifestyle. Peace, love, and always remember. Center of Light Radio, every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find me here in this chair doing what I absolutely love, which is connecting to people like my guest tonight, connecting with people in the chat room, connecting with people all over. It makes my heart sing. It brings me joy. David, hence my question. In the spiritual field as a teacher, whatever titles you would claim, what sets you on fire? What is the thing about spirituality as a teacher, presenter? What is the one subject that you just really just... Mm, you know, that's a very difficult question because a lot of subjects do that. <laughs> so uh, let's try a few different things here. One, I love it uh, when I see people get it, when it just clicks and something just their life is transformed, at least in some small way or major way. I've had some people at uh, some of my events that have really experienced some profound energetic shifts. So that's always a pleasure to hear back. Uh, sometimes even a couple of years later, it's, I'm like, who are you? Uh, but they remember me and have some story to tell. Uh, I, I really hate to say it. I love people and try my best to remember. And I've always had a great memory for people, but sometimes it gets a little difficult. <laughs> so anyway, I like seeing when people uh, experience that transformation. That's uh, one thing that really sets me on fire. Another thing is, although I do see a uh, individual clients, I've always preferred uh, speaking. Uh, there's something about that dynamism between uh, a group of people that really makes things alive. Uh, I just thoroughly enjoy that in the interplay. It's just fun for me. So, But I also bet that you like the energy that wells up inside of you when you're doing it. Would you say that's the drug? <laughs> Well, uh, if you want to go there, yes, that is as well. Sure. That That is as well. I, uh, Which actually brings me to another part of my work. I do energy transmissions as well. And uh, I'll do it to a group when I'm at a group event, uh, do a transmission of energy. And that's what I say when people have sometimes some energetic shifts that can help the process along. Like you, David, I, I love the speaking gig because I do these bursts of light live feeds on Facebook. And I'll just randomly pick a topic and I'll just sit down and look at my camera and just go at it. I may have a couple of notes and sometimes I have no notes at all. And once I start about five minutes later into it, I realize that the trans the transition has already happened. It's not quote Keith speaking anymore. It is me. I'm not trying to create a separation, but the idea that it's not me or the me, at least I know as me in waking bodily states of consciousness. And I begin to ride this current and uh, I don't want to come back. <laughs> I know that feeling. Right. I know that feeling. And, Yes, I know what you mean. It's me, but not me. Uh, we're all tapped into that. It's just do we expand that awareness to open to that? And if we're open to it, it's also us. Yeah, and, not, and right. And this is not necessarily about David or and or Keith. This is about the fact that we're sharing this through this discussion, this dialogue between David and I, that as we had mentioned, that we are both passionate about spirituality or speaking and or speaking and if when we, anyone gets into that passion be it bowling be it going to movies whatever it is that is truly your fire when you get into that state of consciousness you will be able to get to feel yourself amalgamate unify with a higher consciousness um and so yeah david i love the energy rush that comes in let me ask you this do you find david that once you get going doing what you love and you're in the spirit and you're inspired that after a while you begin to vibrate so high that you have to come back to earth. And one way that you do that is by, I need some food <laughs> because that's an earthly activity or I need to walk because that's an earthly activity that you need to somehow begin to ground yourself because it feels like your dis disassociation is pretty intense. Like you almost can't function anymore unless you decide to completely slip out and let go. 
Well, I would say the food thing, I'm always hungry and always eating, so that would uh, not be a, a good question to ask. Uh, I will say probably that's helpful. Uh, if one is not grounded, now here's a hint for everybody in the audience as well. Yeah, walk around, do some physical activity, slap yourself silly a little, uh, whatever it takes <laughs> to get you in your body, do it, because that's where we're supposed to be, actually. And uh, I find also with the energy, the more, at least I, and I, my suspicion is pretty much uh, everybody from the, the people that I've worked with, my suspicion is that the way uh, we really can best deal with this is the more grounded we can stay while we're bringing that in, the more powerfully we can bring that in. Now, I'm not saying we won't necessarily kind of go a little bit to la-la land or to bliss or whatever you choose to call that. However, the more we can embody that and keep that on the earth, the more powerfully we can transmit that, the more powerfully we can live. It's not that we're meant to go out of this world, but uh, I gather you have somewhat of a Christian background, correct? I was raised Catholic. Well, uh, I will then I'll use this, which I'm sure you and a lot of your audience have heard, uh, be in the world, but not of the world. What use yeah. are we if we're not here? And that comes down to the global transformation. We're here to make a difference as long as we're not putting our stuff onto the world. We need to know our stuff and embody that light. And when we are grounded and bring that spirituality to uh, what we would call the physical reality, we are making that difference. Now, I would do a philosophical quibble here. I hear people uh, separate the spirit from uh, this world. Uh, in one way, you might say that's true. However, in another way, we're called to live that spirit in this world, and it's all the manifestation of that. So it, it's kind of a quibble. Yeah, I agree with you, Dave, and that's, that's why a little earlier when we were dialoguing, I brought up... Um, when we see the world, or actually I was talking about, I wasn't trying to create a separation. Often you spiritists will say, spirit told me, and my mentor, oh, that used to bother him like God. <laughs> he says, do you have any idea what kind of separation you are creating within yourself when you say spirit told me? And I completely get that. But sometimes when we speak with others, we need to say spirit told me. So it kind of creates some information that at least at that point that I'm trying to describe, I was tapping to, into something that is a little beyond my ego. And it helps in that regard, but it can tend to create a separation between it's yourself both and. and yourself. Both and. Yes. If we yes. didn't have that little bit of ego, remember that little bit of ego has kept us surviving in this physical body thus far. So I would not say uh, judge ego and say, oh, how evil it is. If you want to go philosophically, if you're judging something as evil, you are separating yourself. But I, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole right now. <laughs> right, right. But if you want to go that way, uh, you could say it has benefited us in some ways. Now, that aside, uh, we're in a world we we have uh, extremes. We have uh, dichotomies. And sometimes it pays to not look at it that way, but know that you can have both at once. We can have the transcendent and the imminent. We can have the, the divine that's, uh, that's total awe-inspiring, and we can also have the divine that's in our hearts. And I, that doesn't mean it's not divine. It just means they're two sides of the same inestimable treasure, that same coin. I think it's why we all came here. I mean, we came, many of us, I think we all come here with a mission and a purpose, but I think a lot of us came on here just for the sheer fun of it, to waddle in the in the mud a little bit and then get into his clean water and then waddle back in the mud hey, a little bit. Uh, just like the pigs, we can enjoy uh, wallowing in the mud a little here and there. <laughs> uh, uh, here's an analogy that often, uh, when people ask a question, often will be mentioned in some of my events. And uh, we're given manure in life, uh, and that manure we can use to grow things or we can wallow in it like a dog. I mean, the dog enjoys that. Now, would I recommend us doing that all the time? Uh, not really. But hey, the dog certainly enjoys it. What are we going to do with that? Are we going to uh, 
rolling it? Are we going to throw it around at each other? Are we going to be gardeners of the soul and grow something? That's our choice. But it doesn't necessarily mean the manure itself is a bad thing. It's what are we doing with that? What are we doing with our lives? Even when that blankety blank is uh, hitting the fan in our lives, what do we do with that? That chaos is important. Our world is in chaos. There's no doubt about it. But if it weren't in chaos, what kind of transformation could we have? If everything were static and the same, it would not change. Change is rooted in chaos. And we need to look for the order in the chaos so we can transform and rise through the murk like the phoenix to find a greater degree of bliss. Yeah? Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> and I love we, that you said, you know, um, we can, we're able to dabble with both sides and see, I live, I don't hide my life per se. I have people, I have people often say, you Keith, you know, you claim you're the spiritual teacher. Well, it's not, it's not like I'm claiming or boasting that it's just a title to say, Hey, I got some information for you if you want it. Right. But as the spiritual teacher, they say, you, I see you out in public and you, 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 you dabble pretty heavy in your human self. Well, because I enjoy it. I understand the invisible line. I understand that I can cross that line, but I'm smart enough to know that I need to go back home for a little bit to rejuvenate my soul. And one reason I enjoy it, just for the sheer fact that it's fun, but also it helps me to bridge conversation with other people. I am no different than you. I'm having a blast on this earth plateau. I'll go out and have drinks with the guys. I'll do the earthly things. I don't try to put on a facade and carry this spiritual elite role. Because I'm just like you. In fact, what it does help me to do, it helps me to connect with those people who appreciate what I'm doing and want more learning and more expansion in your life, in their life. So it kind of it kind of creates a bridge between I'm just a guy next door, but yet I have this plethora of information through the life work I've done that I'm here to hand it to you because a lot of people. And I'm sure you've seen this as well, David. When we go to spiritual expos, and this is not judging anybody, because congratulations if you're a successful teacher, spiritual author, or whatever, and they have these suits on, and that's great if you're wearing the suit and you're doing your thing in a tie, and that's really cool. But some people cannot relate to that because to them, it's too high, it's too far of a goal to comprehend. Here's this person dressed in a suit, and they have all this money and all these accolades, and but there are some people that do come along and they live very, very simply. And it helps people in the audience to relate that I get that. I understand that that person reminds me of me. They're the person next door. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I would. Uh, now, you're coming from a guy. I've not worn a suit in years, but I generally do wear a, a dress shirt, uh, usually a very colorful one. Uh, but you might say it's a dress shirt open at the collar. So uh, I'm somewhere in the middle there. <laughs> It's usually a it's usually a flamboyant color though, so you would never uh, know the difference. But uh, that aside, I, I thought I'd go throw ahead. that joke. No, in go ahead, there. go ahead, sir. P please entertain you. So, I would say if that's one's thing uh, in a suit, I mean, you look at half the world; they're wearing suits. If if you're in the business world, if so, I mean. It would depend, though. A lot of people can't relate to that. It wouldn't bother me personally because I'm around both sides of it. My family, as, as I say, has been in business for generations, uh, so it's not like it would turn me off. But I completely understand where it might uh, be for some people uh, a totally uh, different thing. And yes, we are called to be grounded and in the world. Uh, if someone can't have a sense of humor, uh, I find that very uh, disconcerting. I here and there have gotten myself in trouble, uh, actually, with uh, that. Uh, so uh, I am a little bit like, okay, we need to lighten up around some things. There are a lot of issues in our world, and I understand a lot of them can be very heavy, but we're taking ourselves so seriously, which is why I appreciate your, you saying that, uh, hey, I go out and have a drink with the guys, or I... Uh, let loose now and then, and that's a healthy or thing. Or quite a few. <laughs> uh, that's your choice. I have no comment on that one way or the other. Uh, but hey, if you wanna if you wanna get plastered and uh, go totally unconscious, I guess that's a. If you're conscious about going unconscious, I guess that's a choice. There you have it. So, so David, yeah. do you work in other arenas, other fields? For example, ETs, ghosts. Is that something that you dabble in? ETs is not something I have generally dabbled in. If you want to say ghosts, uh, not per se. However, I do uh, 
Uh, I can see at times people's uh, deceased relatives and describe them uh, on occasion. Uh, again, my main favorite thing is public speaking, bringing through information and energy. And I am also a writer, which the book will come out eventually, but that's another story. Uh, however, I do do uh, private clients. When I do that, my goal is to help see them transform their lives. I'm not here to predict their future because we have choice. We can help change our future, which is why our personal transformation and our global transformation are both important because we can change things. So my goal, if and when I do see private clients, is to help them claim their own power. Uh, I like to joke uh, that sometimes the best client is one who never comes back because they don't need to. I can appreciate what you just said, sir, because that is always, say, a goal of mine. Well, is let's that, say that shoots me in the foot business-wise. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that means you that means you're doing your work very correctly. You know, I, I've always said that my goal as a speaker slash teacher, whatever it is you want to call me, doesn't matter to me, is that when I leave the, the venue and you leave the venue, that you never have to return to another speaker ever again, unless you want to do it for sheer entertainment, just to go hang out with some like-minded people in a spiritual yes. event. I get it because I want to be so thorough with my work as you, you know, like you said, one thing that gets my fire truly, truly stoked is to see the return visit of a friend or someone I met and notice the transformation that happened in their heart by something that I was able to be a part of. Some people call it an ego stroke. It really doesn't matter what you, to me what it's called. All I know is what it does to me inside like it does you. It just sets me aglow. It sets, uh, you can call it ego or you could call it anything you like. However, sometimes there is uh, something to be said for satisfaction in a job well done, for to see that good has been done and to know that we can, as individuals, make a difference. Now, I would say maybe if you wanted to go to the harmfulness of ego, if one's so attached to it that it becomes part of their identity, well, maybe you could run into problems there. However, in my uh, personal opinion, uh, the fact that we know we can do good and help people is good because then we will actually be more inclined to do it in the world. For sure. I got a question from the chat room. Stormtrooper asked the question. Uh, there he is. What if we have no motivation to change things because the weight is just too heavy on us? What would be your thoughts for that? In one way, that is totally understandable. In another way, as well, when the pain becomes so very great that uh, it's unbearable, absolutely, and the only way one... How do I put this? I do not want to discount anyone's experience here um, who is experiencing a great deal of weight. Uh, however, there is a place where sometimes circumstances and those also within us become so painful, so heavy, that the only thing is to change, period. And that's uh, not to dishonor uh, the other experience because it is also a part of life. But uh, it's uh, hard to explain. I don't know if I was clear on that or not. Um, Stormtrooper, if you would like to move through that, not that you're broken. Never, please, never anyone um, take it as if I'm assuming that someone's broken. But if you would like to reach to me, Keith Anthony Blanchard at gmail.com, I'd like to have a conversation with you and just offer a few little things here and there that might help you to find it easier, um, purposeful, beneficial, uh, so you can move through that tough time that you might be having. Uh, just a, a nugget. So make sure you contact me if that's something you're interested in. So, David, Storm can trooper, you give. Uh, go ahead, Storm sir. Trooper, uh... I send you light oh, and energy yes. and wish you well and peace and all that you uh, need in that shift. Uh, blessings to you. Times a million, for sure. So, David, can you give us any insight at all about this book you have as a cliffhanger or this project you work in? Maybe uh, maybe not the title, but just a, just an overview of what it might be about so we can be uh, salivating over here. Well, uh, you might say there's an element of a little bit of personal transformation and maybe a little bit of world transformation in there, although that's not directly the topic. But I will tell you, uh, there is a little bit of that in there. I 
I think I'm going to be working on a new book. In fact, I have. Um, I did. A, we talked about these burst of light live video feeds I've done earlier. Um, one night, in fact, quite a few nights, I was so on point to use a word. It just became the next book. I mean, I did this in a matter of three hours, three one hour burst of light live sessions. And so my marketing director, Renee, she transcribed all the information. In fact, David, it's called Radical Transformation, how to get, offer the reader um, some very simple insights to go inside and put certain keys in certain doors and they begin to open up. And one is about awareness, how to live in an expanded state of awareness just by one simple exercise. You'll be able to see through your eyes, you'll be able to hear with your ears, feel with your feeling base, Use your complete senses all at the same time. And when you get a glimpse of that, it's just like a weight. When you want to work out your physical mass, you lift weights. Well, what this exercise is, it's a an awareness weight. And you begin to stretch and stretch and stretch. And next thing you know, you live into living in an expanded state of awareness. But also, I'm very big on clarity, explosive clarity. What are your thoughts about clarity, David? The Or at least the importance of being clear. Well, awareness is obviously a first step. You're aware of what's going on in you and what's going on around you. You've pulled back enough that between what you receive, what's going on around you and how you act in accordance to that, you have that choice point. And the broader that uh, awareness, the more choices you can make. Now, clarity, when we are aware, uh, then we get clear on where we choose to put that energy. And Clarity is indeed important. If we're not clear on what we want to do, uh, we're going to get uh, wherever we go. We're not going to have much choice in that. So if we have reached the choice point of awareness, that clarity allows us to see things clearly and choose clearly what we want. Very well said, brother. You and I parallel in many, many ways. I was just thinking that a little earlier when you were talking <laughs> about that awareness in the in your book. Uh, that actually might be a little piece that's in mine. Uh, so uh, that's yeah. ironic. And, you know, David, I, I, I've also said there are four other components. Passion, that's the fire. That's get in there and roll your sleeves up, right? Get your fingers dirty and get in there and do the work. And then there's the sincerity. That's the other part that says, it's the same coin. It's just the other side that says, you know, I'm serious about this. I really mean it. And then you have humility. And then you have vulnerability. And I think these four components, when practiced sincerely and passionately, dear Lord, a stargate opens up. What are your thoughts about that? So you said sincerity, passion, humility, and what was the other one? Vulnerability. Vulnerability. I would say that if you don't have a passion, you're not going to move anywhere. That's your fuel. (laughs) And if you're not sincere, you are uh, basically manipulating things. And if you're not sincere, are you really believing what you're passionate about either? There's a disconnect there. If you can't have sincerity about what your passion is, you are living that disconnect and you won't go anywhere with any of it. Now, humility, if I only do this for myself, what am I? Uh, But uh, if there's a greater cause, that cause is living me. And that uh, cause begins to multiply. It's almost as if we walk the way, but the way begins to walk us. Now, I will, uh, on a side note, I see a lot in this field of about humility. It's I'm so humble, I'm so nothing. And yet that can also be the opposite coin of ego because it becomes kind of a cliche. And if one is truly humble, does one need to boast? Or does one need to say how truly humble one is? Or can one actually just be who one is? And that is clearly the humility. There's not either side of that ego, neither inflationary nor deflationary. But back to what we were saying here, the last point, vulnerability, that basically means we have taken down some of those walls, some of that separation, so we can be seen and we can see. And uh, If we can see things as they are and others can see us as we are, 
we've also removed a, a little bit of that veil of separation. So I would say those are uh, important components and you mix those together and yes, you have a uh, great power. Dude, I said, I really enjoyed sitting back and listening to you. Um, Go at each one of those. <laughs> that was very, very awesome. And definitely the humility I was referring to is not the cliche humility. It's the humility of being of service for no other reason uh, other than I figured the fact that, I didn't get that about you, but I, right, right, uh, as right, I say, right, it was a side note uh, right, because right. I see this quite a bit and it's an observation I will make from time to time. Yes. David, wow, are we at the top of the hour? Dude, I thoroughly enjoyed speaking with you, sir. Um, would you leave us a final thought? Oh, one, I did remember that thing from earlier, and that was, if it. you have any venues you want me to speak at, a, a, you know where to reach out. Uh, the website and the phone and everything else, I'm available. It's always my pleasure. Now, final thoughts. We're here to make a difference, and if we can't be different ourselves, different in the sense that we really realize who we really are, we are not going to make that difference. We will live in a world of separation. You see it outside of us all the time. You see everybody fighting everybody. And until we end the war in ourselves, the fight with ourselves, we will never be peacemakers. And until we transform ourselves, we cannot transform the world. However, we are at a point for the first time in history where we can actually consciously make some decisions we could not in the past. As we become aware, we have a greater power to decide. And that's where we are now. We have the power to transform our world. We have the power to create and the power to destroy. And let's use that for the good. David, give out your contact information one more time, please, sir, for our listening audience. That is my website is Divine Blaze, D I V I N E B L A Z E dot com. And of course, uh, let's remember the divine in us and how to spell divine. And my phone <laughs> number is 805 701 47. Four, four. And of course, on my website, there is a contact form and you can also sign up. I'm keeping fingers crossed. It is currently working now for uh, sign up to my list on the uh, con on a, a little thing that pops up and you will get that free e-course. And finally, I am at Facebook under the username David.H.Nichols, N-I-C-H-O-L-S. And it's always a pleasure to hear from you. David, thank you, sir, for being a really fun, enlightening, just real guest. I appreciate it greatly, sir. Thank you. This was one of the more fun. I always enjoy radio shows and stuff like that, but I really enjoyed this one. Thank you, my brother. Everyone, Mr. David Hamilton Nichols. I really enjoyed this guy. As he said, get out of the fight. Get out of the fight with the world. Get out of the fight with terrorism. Get out of the fight with racism. Get out of the fight with this. Get out of the fight with that. It's all an internal bickering that we project onto the world. And it becomes a filter because we don't want to own that. So we want to stick it out there and have somebody else own that. And like he said, it's not going to change until we change individually. And once this catches on globally, next thing you know, we're living in the prophecy of heaven on earth. Next week on Center of Light Radio, my guest is Jennifer Foster. She came highly recommended. 6 p.m. Eastern time. You can find me sitting in this chair for Center of Light Radio also. If you would go to Facebook, dot, go to Facebook and look up uh, Clean and Green Mission Now. That's Facebook.com slash Clean and Green Mission Now, inspired by Swamji Visvi Yogi, divine holy man from India that I was fortunate to uh, spend time with. This is something he really wants me to push, 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 push. He told me, he called one of my friends uh, recently who is always in close contact with Swamji. Divine realized man now. He said, contact Keith, have him get on this thing. He said that the world is not in a good way right now. This is not to slant you or make you believe in fear and doom and gloom prophecy. This is not fear porn. He's telling us that we need to get this thing going because it's we're starting to fall behind. And it can come to a time, which he's trying to avoid by saying, we need to start cleaning up the earth. Clean and green mission now on Facebook. I look forward to seeing you next week. Always. Peace, love, and live in light. Time.